Today we are starting another retrofit of a heat pump to this rather beautiful period property and I'm expecting a tricky installation. First we've got two vented cylinders we have to convert into unvented and move to a new location but we're also going to try to run this setup with no buffers, no additional pumps, direct for the simplicity of the setup and highest possible efficiency. And we have to incorporate two existing underfloor heating systems into this as well. And I'm going to try to do it by just using this little device. So we are in the garage and we'll be putting our plant room right in here. This was meant to be a mini brewery. Sadly, we are taking it over for for the plant room. What are we gonna do? The heat pump will go straight behind that wall in the garden. We run the primary pipe work under the ceiling towards the house and we'll run uh, the uh, pipe work to the first floor level. We've got a little bit of, I think, DIY under for heating going throughout the house. So we've got two of those pumps and two of microbore 12. I think the other one is 10 mil under for heating for a shower room downstairs in the hallway and a kitchen in the other part of the house. This is a bathroom on the back of the house. And what we have here, heat only boiler on a sealed system already. One of the vented cylinders, there's another one in the other part of the house. And what's important is we've got two sets of flow and returns going from this boiler. One for central heating in 22 mil copper, and the other one flow and return going to the cylinder on the other side of the house still on the uh, first floor it will become important in a second we also have this micro bore under floor heating setup which again i need to figure out what to do with it we might keep the circulator and create separation on primary pipe work we might just run it direct cylinder cover number two second uh, vented cylinder with uh probably do it yourself operation here because you've got pumping modules in the floor another shower pump so everything has been pumped here this is coming out completely and we have to run pipe work from the garage to here flow return hot cold secondary circulation then obviously we have to link it somehow to the cylinder number one where the boiler is and we're gonna use pipes going through the loft for hot and cold and we're gonna use the second set of flow and returns to split the heating load. So we're gonna run 35 millimeters through the garage, 28 millimeters copper to here, and then we're gonna connect to two sets of 22s. Flow and returns, two sets of them, one for heating, one for uh, hot water from the uh, boiler. Go, They go through this room, across there uh, to the corner, and through this little room here, where you can see the pipes, here in the floor. So right here, we've got flow and return for the heating, 22 mil copper, going all the way back to the cylinder number two from the boiler. We can't really use it without separation. It, there would be too much pressure loss on 10 kilowatt uh, load on a heat pump. So what are we gonna do? We've got a second set of flow and returns going from the boiler over there back to the cylinder as well, that we don't need. We're gonna split the load. Coming to here, we're gonna cap this flow and return, so it only serves half of the house, and then reconnect this flow and return going back to the boiler, obviously boiler will be removed, to serve the other part of the house. That way we're splitting the load and hopefully two sets of 22s can run 10 kilowatts, five kilowatt each throughout the house without need for separation, buffers or additional pumps. Monday, we're back on site and it's the coldest week so far in the year the temperatures are getting to drop below zero so not the best time to remove existing heating system but we don't have a choice what we've done so far is pipe work hot cold secondary return flow and return going back to the house you can see below the ceiling uh, insulated and i've decorated the plant room so it should dry in the next half an hour so what we have here is a flow and return from the plant room in the garage. It goes 35 mil copper all the way to here and then it reduces to 28 because uh, that would be next to impossible to run 35 through uh, the joists. You would have to notch them too deeply and 28 will be fine because with this 28 we're going to run it to where the airing cupboard used to be and connecting to two sets of 22s, splitting the house in two. So Martin is getting ready to remove this lot and we also have this 10 mil pipe work here for under for heating going downstairs to the kitchen 
I may initially run it without the pump and put a tiny flow meter on it to see how much flow we are getting. If we're not getting enough flow, well, then we'll have to figure it out later. The steam coming out from a unit is normal. It's just going through its defrost. Unit's been running since yesterday. And, well, let's check out how it performed in terms of keeping the property warm. The very first thing I want to see on every install we turn on is the flow rate. Flow is king. The more flow you get, the more energy you can transfer to the house. And as you can see, we're getting 2000 liters, 2050 liters, so we are fine. So I installed those little valves. They actually kind of new product to the market and they've got flow setters, same or flow limiters, same as you will find on under for heating. So you can see how much flow you're getting through your radiator or through a single loop. And in here, we just had a single loop. So I thought that valve would be perfect. Question was, will we get enough flow through those 12 mil pipes? And as you can see, we are getting surface temperature in the hallway all the way through of 26 degrees. And also in the bathroom, we're getting 25 degrees surface temperature plus this tower rail heating up nicely. This is the far end of the house, end of the system. That's probably where the index circuit is as well. And what we have here, we did exactly the same. We've used the same valve with a flow setter on it. Is that flow enough for, for the kitchen downstairs? Well, let's go downstairs and have a look and see what the temperature in the kitchen is because this is a perfect day to test it. It's zero degrees outside. This could be a problematic area. This could underperform. However, we've got a thermometer here and it shows 19 degrees. So this under for heating plus couple of rats in here seem to be performing just fine. Let's check the surface temperature of the floor. This floor gets to around 24 degrees. However, some areas seem to perform better than others. So we're getting 23. Then there is a patch with no heating. And then there is another patch getting to around 23 degrees as well. I'm quite happy that a very simple solution of using just a flow limiting radiator valve works on underfloor heating. The biggest benefit of it is being able to see and adjust the flow rate. Happy to report that the system operates absolutely fine and we got a chance to test it at the design conditions, meaning a very cold weather where the temperature drops below zero. The setup is as simple as it gets. There's no buffers, no additional pumps, just one circulator inside the heat pump running through large primaries to the house and the heating system operates as one big zone running under for heating and radiators at the same temperature. And if there are any adjustments required, we're using those little flow setters that actually are originally designed for radiators, but there's no harm trying it on under for heating as well, uh, especially those single uh, zone setups that don't have any flow adjustment and it works brilliantly well if you are interested in uh, heat pump installations or how to make generally heating systems super efficient including super efficient gas boilers i'm currently working on a full scale heating system design and installation mega course for early access, go to www.urbanheatingacademy.co.uk and join the waiting list. Link also in the description.